Hey everyone, this is Elijah K. Johnson with the Miles Franklin Market Update. And with us today is Dr. Rosa Abrantismitz. She is the co-chair of the Brattles Technology Practice and an expert on gold and silver manipulation. Dr. Abrantismitz, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. It's great to be with you again. It's great to have you. And I guess really the reason why I wanted to have you on was because of in the last couple of weeks, we've seen this effort from Reddit and on social media to short squeeze silver. And uh, it's just, we've seen at Miles Franklin the most demand we've ever seen in all of our history these past couple of weeks. So I really wanted to get your take on this, but first, if you could explain for our viewers kind of your, uh, just kind of a recap of your research on gold and silver manipulation and what you've found. Sure. Um... I've looked into gold and silver manipulation, potential manipulation, not just spot, uh, but uh, also futures uh, with respect to spoofing. Uh, in the spot market in particular, I looked into the LBMA uh, fixings, uh, two of them in gold and one for silver on a daily basis. Uh, and uh, in silver, the patterns are even more striking than in gold in terms of uh, prices going down systematically the vast majority of the time during the fixing. Um, and the silver fixing used to be set by just three banks rather at, you know, years ago, rather than uh, more, which makes it makes collusion easier to, to occur. So there, there are cases ongoing, some of them partially based on my work. Um, there are settlements as well in some of these cases. I have also looked into the possibility of spoofing in both silver and gold markets, uh, futures prices. It is harder to study uh, these, these cases because we need to match up communications and we need to exactly know who's trading and match those up against prices. Um, but though some of that work uh, on my end has been done in the background on, on some of the cases, and of course we know that um, there have been recent settlements related to spoofing of precious metals prices. Many people say that commercials are net short silver. Do you think that suppresses the price? Being short on an asset uh, can lead to... Um, to have a motive to suppress the prices into the future in case you have the ability to move prices. So if you net short, it means that at some point very soon into the future, you're going to have to cover your, your short sale and therefore you're going to have to buy and you hope to buy at a lower price in the future than you bought, than you sold earlier. So it can create an incentive to, to depress prices. But the question then becomes whether you're big enough to create that type of pressure. Um, and we do not know who is potentially net short specifically. Uh, there are statistics that show that commercial traders in general uh, uh, were net short of civil futures. But... Um, it is possible for net shorts to create the incentive and potentially even to move prices uh, downwards. Yes. And this whole idea of the silver squeeze is to kind of counteract that possible manipulation or suppression. What are your thoughts on that? There is one possibility that some other side could realize that uh, somebody is in need to cover its positions that is potentially uh, able to move prices down with its short, uh, net short positions, and somebody else may try and counteract and, and move prices upwards. Uh, but there's potentially other explanations as well. Uh, maybe there wasn't just enough liquidity in the market at that point when you had to cover your positions and therefore prices were driven upwards just simply due to market forces. And once those positions got covered, prices stopped going up. Um, that seems to even be more consistent with, with what seems to have happened, at least from an outsider's perspective like mine. Now, one of the things that confuses a lot of people and sometimes confuses me and what we see on the physical side of the market, you know, when you know we're selling coins and bars, we're seeing unprecedented demand a lot of in the last couple of weeks. And, you know, other times we're seeing so much demand, but we're not seeing the price move, uh, the spot price 
move that much. What is your perspective on that? I mean, one of the uh, arguments is, well, then prices have to be suppressed some other like unnatural way. What is your perspective on that? I cannot say that I have looked into that closely, so I don't know exactly. But all in all, um, even through my episodes that I have studied of, you know, market, I believe, evidence consistent with market uh, manipulation and specifically prices suppression of silver spot prices around the LBMA fixing, those types of effects tend to be short-lived. And so um, I have difficulty in believing that a market as large as silver uh, would be systematically, consistently underpriced um, for very long periods of time. Uh, the, it's, it's liquid enough that it will correct uh, unless there's some vast disinformation happening in the market that completely distorts traders' expectations of what the true value of silver is. What I think nowadays is that the, the level of uncertainty is so high uh, that there's very different views as to the short-term uh, price movement that we might see, though most people agree that long-term we probably are going to see silver prices still rising a bit more. But in the short term, I think the, the uncertainty is so large um, that it's difficult to attribute any price movements to necessarily to manipulation. Now, one thing that people also point out is the amount of volume we see traded sometimes. We see, you know, a billion ounces of silver or more traded in one day. And that's like the whole mining supply. The point that a lot of people make is it seems like there's this disconnect. It seems like there's just there's a lot of paper being traded in a sense. It's not really the physical metal. And it seems like then the spot price really doesn't have to do with the demand for physical metal. What is your perspective on that? I think I think that there's a lot of truth in that. There's there's a, a lot of there's a lot more paper out there than than physical. Um, and, and that creates a certain disconnect between prices and, and you would think that the true underlying market fundamentals. Now, that disconnect is also driven by other fundamentals that we have to be, to take into account. But yes, I agree that, that, um, uh, we see the same thing in gold. We see the same in a lot of markets. There's, there's so much paper out there. Um, uh, it, it, it would never be able, it, it's very difficult to make that connection between the price of all of that paper and the price of the underlying physical that is behind it, because there's very few nowadays. And I guess it may, it, to kind of clarify for the viewers, because I see on one hand, you know, how uh, you're saying that the market itself seems to be, the price seems to be based largely on market fundamentals, but at the same time, there's so much more paper f silver out there than the actual metal. So wouldn't the volume of paper silver out there kind of suppress the price or how, how does that actually work? Well, the paper itself has a value and the market values that paper. So if you have that in mind and you believe that markets are efficient, which I believe they are, uh, on average, price, the price of the paper is going to be correctly priced and the price of the physical will be correctly priced. Now, the prices of the two may well be very different because there's so much more paper than physical. So there's more things potentially that one has to take into account if you're pricing the paper versus if you are only pricing the physical. But the two are also connected to each other. So one influences the other, but they are different. So it is possible for the price levels to be different. It is possible for occasionally prices to move somehow in different directions, though over the long run, you would expect them to, to take a very similar trend. All right. Well, Dr. Branchesmith, we really appreciate your perspectives. And yeah, we really like getting everyone's perspectives on these issues we're seeing nowadays. Any last thoughts before we let you go? And where can people find you online? Well, um, in terms of final thoughts, 
I think last time I told you the same. Um, I keep myself very busy with uh, market manipulation and market abuse and fraud and collusion of all types. Uh, but I do believe that for the most part, uh, markets uh, behave well. They they truly reflect market fundamentals. I also believe that when markets are very liquid, uh, like like in the case of silver and gold, it is very difficult to systematically for a long period of time to push prices too high or too low. So to the extent that market abuse tends to happen, um, it tends to be episodic, it tends to be short-lived. All right, well, Dr. Branch-Smith, thank you so much and God bless. Thank you.